I heard this noise. Now, it was just like a, a giant cauldron of water being poured onto a red-hot fire. But if you can imagine, a thousand times louder. And my first reaction was the children. I must get out. There's a plane crashing. So I slipped on my jumper. I, run out, I ran out through the side entrance of the house towards the front garden to look for them coming across the fields. And to my amazement, there suspended on the top of the roof of this old farm was this object that I can only describe as a huge Mexican hat. It was that shape without the bobbles. It must have been 15 to 20 yards from where I stood. It covered the roof. So, in circumference, it must have been about 60 feet. It was, it was enormous. The people in the spacecraft were just looking out. I could see them from the waist to the top of their heads. They were very beautiful people. They had long golden hair, like the old kings used to wear, turned under. They had a very vivid blue, like ski top affair. On, and they just looked at us. Their eyes, the expression in their eyes, were full of compassion. And then, all of a sudden, I felt the tension leaving me, and I felt movement, and I turned round to touch my children. And when I looked again, it was gone. Now, we stood there, and I said to the boys, did you see what I seen? Yes, Mummy, yes. I said, well, wh where is it? It's gone. And we looked. And my second son said, there it is, Mum. And we watched it in the sky, just like a cotton reel, circle round the farm three times. And then it just shot straight up and away. But just occasionally, there is physical evidence to back up reports of close encounters. On the morning of November the 9th, 1979, forestry worker Bob Taylor walked down this woodland track outside Livingston New Town near Edinburgh. He rounded a corner and was astonished to be confronted by an unearthly object. A huge thing with a big round dome, a very dark grey colour, and it had a, a big flange going all the way around. I could see arms sticking out of this flange with what I took to be blades on the top. Later he described what he'd seen to a local newspaper artist who drew this sketch. As I stood here, there was two balls came out, two balls, I think they'd be about three feet in diameter, with about six spikes, and they were rolling on these spikes, and they came right up beside me, and I remember feeling a tug at that time, and a very powerful smell, a choking sort of smell, and that was it. He crawled up this path and staggered home to be met on the doorstep by his bewildered wife. He looked terrible when he came in the door and he just stood at the door and I said, have you had an accident with your lorry? And he said, no, I've been attacked. And I said, what with? And he said, a spaceship. And I said, oh, goodness me, there's no such a thing as a spaceship. I'm going to phone the doctor. You must have fell and hurt your head. He looked quite shocked, and he, he was drained, he was right white, and his face was dirty, and he had a red scar here, and uh, his clothes were all dirty, and his trousers, and then he told me his trousers had been torn. Police station, Bargate. The police were called, and they discovered inexplicable track marks at the scene of the incident. On examining the area, I found two track marks in approximately 40 holes in the ground. And these are the track marks here, and these are the 40 holes. Uh, since then, I've photographed the holes, 
this is a photograph of the hole here. This is a hole that measured approximately three and a half inches. And this other photograph here, you can actually see the tread marks which correspond to the marks here. These markings and tracks were actually inside this area here that's fenced off. Uh, and there was definitely no other tracks leading to or from this area. These are the trousers worn by Mr. Taylor. As you can see, they're of fairly heavy material. We have a tear on the left, just below the pocket, and one on the right trouser leg, again just below the pocket. These marks are consistent with the material having been pulled up while the trousers were being worn. Well, I'm pretty certain that that day that I saw a spaceship sitting here. We must accept the story of Mr. Taylor. He is a very highly respected member of the community, a man of high integrity, and not one likely to invent such a story. Personally, I'm convinced that there must be many, many higher civilizations in this enormous and incredibly ancient universe of ours. And since we are preparing to go out into space ourselves, other older races may have been doing this for millions of years. So it's quite reasonable to think that they may have come here in the remote past, perhaps many times, as indeed I suggested in 2001. So we should look for evidence of such visits, physical evidence in the form, for example, of fossilized transistor radios or their equivalent. But the question is, are they still coming now? Well, at this moment, we have radar networks, American, Russian, and doubtless others, plotting, tracking everything in space. Anything as big as a pencil in orbit around the Earth can be tracked by these radars. Is it conceivable that we've been having visitors over the last decades trying to sneak up on us landing in obscure places, being seen by a few people, and not by these enormous tracking networks. I feel that when there really is a visitation from space, it'll be something spectacular, rather like the climax of the movie, The Close Encounters of the Third Kind. We'll be certain of it within about five minutes. You may wonder, what should you do if you do meet a visitor from space? Well, be very polite and be prepared for a long journey. <laughs>